Hey Dad, happy Father's Day. I wanted to show you something about the Chromebook that we got for you so you can uh, have a lot of fun and get the most out of it. First of all, in the package you should have gotten the Chromebook and power supply and also this little cable that I threw in. It takes you from USB-C to HDMI. This will allow you to put it on your big screen TV. So first of all, a quick look at the ports on the outside. You have a security port, which is for an alarm. You won't use that. Then you have a USB-C port for accessories, a regular USB port for accessories like a flash drive or something like that, or a mouse. Then on this side, this USB-C port is for the charger. You see the charger is also USB-C, and uh, that's for the charger on this side. Uh, you'll see the little battery indicator beside it, and also this light lights up when it's turned on. It turns blue, and so that's how you know that it's the charger side. You probably don't want to put power to the USB on this side, so the power always plugs in on this side. And then this is a micro SD card. Um, we put a 128 gigabyte SD card in there, so you have a lot of extra memory. And uh, this is the output for the headphones. Like when you do your Zoom meetings, this output goes to your headphone amplifier. So the first thing, uh, a Chromebook is not a Windows computer. It's not an Apple. It's got its own Chrome operating system. And it's uh, cloud-based. So it's, you have to be on the internet. You have to have a Google account to use it. And uh, I, I started a Google account for you. Uh, Donald under Donald Record and it's donaldrecord7 at gmail.com and here's the password and the phone number and all that stuff and this will be in the box. So you'll notice that when you open the Chromebook it turns it on. You don't need to uh, push a power button or anything. Okay we put the password in. And there it is. So first thing, one of the most important things with this is the touchpad. You'll use it all the time and there's several different things that Chromebook does really well on the touchpad that'll be useful for you. Let me open a window here. I'm gonna hit uh, Google Chrome. Let me go to a page that I know has some scrolling on it. All right. We're going to start with this American Nation roll call page because we can use all the gestures on this page. First of all, one finger on the pad moves the pointer around. You see the mover, the pointer moving there. Move it around and click with one finger. So that's the gesture with one finger on the on the touchpad. With two fingers, you can scroll the page like so. See the page scrolling. So if you use two fingers, you can scroll down, scroll up. And also, two fingers right clicks on the page. So we right click and see this gives us the opportunities to save or print or whatever. So that is the same as a right click, two fingers pressing on the touchpad. So with three fingers, you swipe down, it goes to overview. So we swipe down and see this shows everything, all the apps that we have open. We have open files, the Play Store, and Chrome on Merkin Nation roll call. So that's what three fingers does for you. So it's one finger to move the pointer and click, two fingers to scroll the page or right click, and three fingers to go to overview. You'll use those all the time. Okay, moving on to the keyboard. The keyboard is different on a Chromebook in that there's no function keys at the top. It has these special function keys. You've got page back, page forward, refresh, magnify, which makes things go to full screen, overview, which does the same thing as scroll as a three finger scroll. It gives you the overview page. This is the uh, screen dim down, screen up, volume mute, volume down, volume up, and the power button. And then over here, the spyglass, that's the uh, search function. So if, uh, let's, let me show you these real quick. And this arrow at the top here, the back of page, the arrow right here on the keyboard does the same thing. So if we click on here, it goes back one page that we were at, 
and then forward one. This does the same thing. So it goes back a page, back another page, forward a page, forward a page. Also up here, this circle with an arrow, that's the refresh. So it refreshes a page. This button right here, the refresh, that does the exact same thing. The uh, full screen page, if we are have a small window like this, and we hit full screen, it blows it up full sp full screen without the uh, without the headers or anything. It just gives you full screen look. And this one is overviewed, like I said. This shows us what apps we have open right now. Same thing as the three finger scroll. The screen dim, screen bright, volume off, volume down, volume up. This is the power button. I'll show you that in a minute. The spyglass, you go here to search apps or web so we type in uh, calculator and there it comes up we click on it so that's how you find things on the on the computer is using this spyglass so on the power button if you put push it for about a second it gives you uh, power off sign off lock which you'll probably never use or feedback I don't even know what that is so you'll use this at the end when you turn the computer off and we'll do that when we're all done so that's the keyboard in a nutshell now the screen the way that I have it set up for you you have uh, launcher down here is this white button then these across here is called the shelf and these are apps that you will use all the time and then this is the tray or the notification area it gives you time of day the status of the battery, the status of your internet connection, and notifications. And let me show you these one at a time. So the launcher, if you click launch and then this arrow, this shows you all the apps that you have available on the computer. And over here you see these two dots, that means you have two pages. The one that's lit up is the page we're looking at. The hollow one, that's this page. See, so these are all the apps that you have on the computer. So that's uh, what the launcher is. The launcher brings up this, uh, brings up all your apps. Click launcher, it goes away. <clears throat> so these, uh, let me do the, show you the, the uh, tray first here. This, this is the notification area before we get into the uh, shelf. So here you click on this anywhere in this window and uh, this presents for you sign out power button, settings. This is how you configure your Wi-Fi, which you're already on, obviously. Bluetooth, you can turn off and on, and this is where you'll see your notifications. Nightlight, there's nothing. And uh, this is the sliders where you can turn your volume up and down. And this is where you can change your screen brightness slider up and down. Now this sign out, what that's for, one thing that's really cool about uh, a Chromebook is the Chromebook is configured for Donald Record 7 at gmail.com as it is. If somebody else wants to use your Chromebook, you want to let a, one of your grandchildren use it or something, you can sign out. And then when they sign in with their Google account, it has their settings the way that they have it. And it changes nothing that you've done with your settings. So they don't, nobody can mess up your stuff. By the same token, if you borrow somebody else's Chromebook and you sign in, donrecord7 at gmail.com, it'll come up configured the way that you have configured yours. It'll look exactly like this in the way that you want it to be. Okay, now on to the shelf. The shelf, these are, these are apps that you use all the time. And we have here the Chrome, Google Chrome for browsing. This is the family website. Zoom, of course I had to put Toast TV on there. This is your Gmail where you can uh, Check your email, Google Photos, Files, and the Play Store. So the first one, this is where you just do browsing. It opens Google Chrome, and this you just uh, browsing the internet in general. And up here at the top in Google Chrome, this is your bookmarks bar. And I've taken some first guesses on what you might want here. Uh, Zoom, Toast TV, Google, just for Googling, for looking things up the Record Family website and YouTube Home, which is if you go here, it's just the home page for YouTube 
for if you want to search and look for videos or whatever you want to do there. If you want to add something to the bookmarks bar, we'll go to Google and search for something you're interested in How about cashews. Are cashews good for you? Well, of course they are. So let's uh, we'll open this health line. And this is what you want to bookmark. So you go to this star right up here. You click the star. And this gives you the opportunity to rename what how it's going to appear in your bookmarks bar. And we're just going to call it cashews. We don't need that big long name on there. And make sure it's going to the bookmark bar. And done. So there it is, right up there in the bookmark bar. To remove something from that bar, you uh, two fingers click, that's the right click. You right click, two fingers, delete, and it's gone. So now what if we want to bookmark something but not have it right there in the bar? Either the bar is full or you don't want it right in front of you. What you do there, you click on the star, you type in how you want it to appear, cashews, and then rather than going to bookmark bar, we click on this arrow and we go to other bookmarks and done. And see now it's added this folder here of other bookmarks and we look there and there they are cashews that i spelled really a weird way now if you want to remove something from the other bookmarks it's the same thing you open other bookmarks you go to what you want to delete right click two fingers on the pad right click delete it's gone all right so that's chrome now these other shortcuts, a lot of these are, are just internet sites. For example, the family website. Go here to look at photos, like such. This one is uh, Zoom. So you go here to uh, go to our Zoom meetings. And here's Toast TV, so you can get there real quick. And there it is, close that. And here's your Gmail, and you go here to check your mail. Now, right now, it's set up for donaldrecord7 at gmail.com, so any of your emails that you get will be there. You can put your other email addresses in here to check your email, but you would need the passwords and whatever you need to, to set those up. Close that. Uh, this is Google Photos. These are some photos that I put on there. And uh, I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Okay, this is files. These are all your assets on the computer and on your cloud. If we look here, downloads, there's nothing there yet. Here's your Google Drive, and there's nothing there yet. This is that micro SD card that I told you that we put in the side, that 128 gig. And I made two folders on here, stored music, and stored photos. There's nothing there yet. I'll show you how to do that. Now say you want to store some photos in your Google Photos. There's some a couple ways to do that. So you're here on the family website and you're cruising through the photos. Oh, there's a when Donnie was born and then oh the kids with a picnic. Oh this is so beautiful. Okay, so this picture here with the kids eating watermelon, you want to store this on your Google Photos. The way you do that, two fingers, right click, gives you uh, save the image, and this gives you the opportunity to rename it right down here. So we want to name this, whoops, watermelon one. In case we want to have 99 other watermelon photos, we can distinguish them. And we're going to My Drive, Save. So now, Watermelon 1 is saved. I'll go verify that, close all this stuff. And that's on your Google Drive. We go here, Files, which shows us all our places. And we go here to Google Drive, My Drive, and there it is, Watermelon 1 is in Google Drive. Suppose we wanna put Watermelon 1 on the SD card. 
we simply grab it and drag it down there and drop it. So now watermelon one is stored here on this SD card. Say we want to put this photo on our Google Photos and take it off of our Google Drive so that we free up space on the drive. The way you do that, you go to Google Photos and don't forget that two finger to scroll down and up. So we want to add Watermelon 1 to your Google Photos. To do that, we go up here to Upload, one finger click. We're loading it from the Google Drive. There it is in the Google Drive. We click on it and we upload. Uploading one of one, boom. There it is, Watermelon 1 is on your Google Photos now. Suppose we want to take that off of the Google Drive to free up space. We go to Files, we go Google Drive, My Drive, there's Watermelon 1. We click on it and we click on this trash can up here. Do you really want to delete water? Yes, we do. So now your drive is clear again, Watermelon 1 is gone. And the same, by the same account, if you want to remove anything from the SD card, same thing. Go to Stored Photos. There's Watermelon 1. We click on it. We click on the trash can right here. And that's gone. Delete. Yes. So now we'll go ahead and uh, leave Watermelon 1 on your Google Photos. There it is. So that you have it. And you don't really need to store a lot of photos on your Google Photos or on your computer if you just want to have them there to look at because all those photos exist right here on the family website and you can look at them anytime without having to take up Google Photo space or cloud space or space on your computer. They're there for you. One reason you might want to put something on Google Photos Google Photos is a nice place to organize your photos. If you want them more organized than they are on the family website, you can do that here. So that's a good reason to do that. All right, that's all that in a nutshell. The only thing left to show you here on the shelf, I have the Play Store here. And what that is, if you want to download an Android app, for example, you might want a weather radar map or you might want a specific game. Of course, you might want to go there and get Facebook or Netflix other apps that you want to use on your computer this is where you get them from the Google Play Store the only other thing that I want to show you on the shelf here if you want to remove something from the shelf you hover over it say you want to remove the Play Store from the shelf and you right click two fingers right click and unpin right there if you want to add something to the shelf Maybe you find that you're using the calculator all the time. Well, remember to get to your apps. You go here to the launcher and click the arrow, and there's all your apps. And we page down here on the dot. There's the calculator. We right click two fingers on the calculator. Pin to shelf. Boom, there it is on the shelf. Close the launcher. See, now there's the calculator on the shelf. And once again, to remove it from the shelf, you right click on it two fingers, bang, unpin, it's gone. So that's how you modify the shelf of things that you're going to use all the time. Uh, that's pretty much it for operation of the computer. There'll be other things, I'm sure. I did want to go through with you real quickly the Zoom app. So we go down here to Zoom, click on Zoom. There's you two's lovely faces. And you want to join a meeting. We type in our meeting code, 824-5830-2252, the number we all know and love, join. And this screen gives you the opportunity to see how other people will see you on the screen. So we want to tilt that forward, and maybe you'd have mom right here beside you. Okay, it looks good. We want to join with video. Join with video. And the computer audio is there. And look, we have uh, Dick Wig is there, and Son Tim is there, and this is how it looks. To go to full screen, you click on this little square up here beside the X, and it goes to full screen mode. 
and this is where you would toggle if you happen to be in this view which is speaker view you would find right up here in the corner gallery view that's what you want gallery view and gallery view if we had 15 people on you'd see all 15 people if we had 30 people on you'd see all 30 people so that's what you want and uh, if you want to mute you click on this down here to mute uh, a shortcut for mute is Alt A. If I hit Alt A, it mutes me. Hit Alt A and it unmutes me. So if you and mom want to talk about something, you don't want anybody else to hear it while you're in the meeting, short, good shortcut. Click Alt A. Then you don't have to be fishing around with your mouse and come down here and click on the little microphone. All you gotta do is hit Alt A and you're there. The uh, other thing is if you want to get up and go get something in the kitchen and you don't have any pants on you don't want anybody to see you hit stop video and it goes to just your uh just your name and you come back and you rejoin with video also if you want to change your name well, let me do this first if you click on participants here this will give you a list of everybody that's in the meeting so it opens this window and it shows us mom and dad are there, Tim is there, Dick Wig is there. That shows us a list of everybody that's at the meeting. And if you want to change your name, you go here to rename and we type in, uh, select all these and we type in, uh, say Don and Ruth. Click OK. See, so now close that. We see now there that Don and Ruth are on. You want to leave the meeting leave there click leave bam you're gone from the meeting okay i wanted to show you settings real quick so you click on the time down here you click on the little gear right there and this opens your settings window and there's a ton of stuff in here for example the touchpad if we type in at the top here touch pad there it is already so then we select touchpad and the first option here enable tap to click that's what I was talking about was the tap to click where if that's turned on now if you just tap the pad see it it clicks which can be problematic for me so because I got big thick sausage fingers so I like to keep that turned off so that turns it off but just in general this is where you find all of your settings for network to for your Bluetooth and there's some pretty detailed things on here uh, all the way through uh, managing your apps and different settings and all of those can be found by clicking on the clock down here in the right corner then clicking on the little gear and then just type in here whatever it is that you want to set the only other thing I really wanted to tell you about that's part of settings if the computer gets all bogged down and things got weird, maybe things got changed and it's not acting correctly, in Chromebook you can do something that's called a power wash. And to do that, you click down here, click on the gear, and in your search we do power wash. And there it is. And what power wash does is it completely removes uh, all account information and resets the Chromebook to be just like it was when it was brand new and so if you if it's bogging down and it's not acting right and it's having problems you can reset it and it sets it back to zero but the beauty of Chrome OS is when you sign in with your account now all your stuff your shelf and the way that you have things configured everything, all of that comes back just the way that it is now without the uh, other problems that was creating the uh, computer to crash. So that's a really nice thing about the Chrome OS is it's got this power wash. You may have to do that someday. And I think that's about it. There'll probably be some other things. Uh, to turn the computer off, you can simply close the book. You close it, turns it off. Or you can push this power button right here and it gives you the option to hit power off and you get power off right there like so bam all gone that's it it's all done if you open it back up it turns back on I know you'll have a lot of fun with it and there'll probably be some other 
you know, questions that you'll have and some other things that you'll want to do with it. And uh, I love you. Enjoy your Chromebook.